Here's how I went from sending 5,000 emails per month to sending 75,000 cold emails per month. Now, even for the best cold email marketers like myself, it is still a numbers game. So if you're not doing high volumes, it is not going to work for you. So I'm gonna show you in this video how to cross every single hurdle and scale up to that 75,000 emails per month number. This is Lee Gen J. We do about $500,000 per month in sales. And if you haven't already, grab my free course and community and 8 million leads totally free down in the description. Now let's get right into it. Now, as you try to scale up your cold email sending, you're gonna run into a few problems here. So how do you have so much data? How do you keep your campaigns populated with fresh data at all times and not hit the same people? I'm gonna be showing you this. How many deals does this actually get you? So if you send out 75,000 emails, what kind of numbers can you expect in terms of meetings, reply rates, et cetera? How many sender emails does this take? Am I doing this all from one sender account? I'm gonna show you exactly how to scale up the sender accounts to reach these numbers. Last but not least, how do I keep the data replenished in a streamlined fashion? I'm gonna show you the exact workflow that our team uses to make sure that our campaigns stay fresh with data at all times. Now, first things first, you're going to need tools and softwares that allow you to scale. If you pick the wrong tool, they might cap you at your ability to scale up to the number of emails you need to scale your company. So here's the tools that we use in our company to send out 75,000 emails every single month. So the tool that we use for warming our emails and sending emails is actually instantly. And here you can see 74.4 thousand emails sent over the last four weeks. All of the other numbers you can ignore. We turn off all tracking after we know a campaign is working. So these numbers will look much lower than they actually are. Now, the reason that I recommend using instantly for scaling is a couple of things. One, you can warm right inside of the platform for all of the email accounts. You can add unlimited email accounts, whereas most platforms will charge you per email sender that you add. And if you get up to 100 senders, like you're probably going to need, that can be like 100 times 50 per month. That's absurd. Instantly actually makes it very affordable if you follow the workflow that I'm going to show you here. Now, Instantly charges you by contacts. So at my current plan, we have 125,000 contacts at all times, 625,000 emails per month. And all of this costs us less than $500 per month. On other platforms, this would be several thousand. Now, the other superpower that Instantly has over its competitors is the ability to load up senders onto a single campaign. So you can have one single campaign sending 75,000 emails per month because you can add accounts to that campaign. So as you can see, here, I can load up as many email senders as I want into this single campaign and it will rotate through them to reach the numbers that we want. So right now the daily limit on this one is 150 emails at 50 emails per sender account. Now, if you're not already signed up for Instantly, you can use the link down in the description for a free trial. All right, now the second thing that you're going to need in order to scale up your cold email sending to 75,000 per month is a data source that allows you to export massive amounts of contacts every single month. For that, I recommend Apollo.io. Now within our Apollo.io plan, we get 2 million data points every single year. And we can actually reuse these data points in clever ways that I'm going to be discussing with you in just a little bit. Now, in addition to having a data provider that allows you to export 2 million contacts per year, it's also important to be able to segment your lists so that you don't hit the same people twice. And Apollo.io is very good at that, and I'll show you what I mean. So now we're in Apollo.io's search function. And as you can see here, lists. When I'm building a new list in the search function to export data, I can both include and exclude lists. So that way, if I'm doing a new search for contacts that I want to export, I can see net new up here. These are ones that I have not used yet. And I can also exclude a list. So if I'm trying to pull contacts off of the same list over and over again because of export limits, I can exclude that list from my next search. And sorry, I can't put anyone's contact information on the screen, so I can't do a full walkthrough with Apollo. If you do want a full walkthrough of Apollo, be sure to join my community. I can post anything that I want there, and I've got that advanced tutorial for you. Now, as you can see here, Apollo.io lets me export up to 20,000 contacts at any given point, but not all these contacts are valid. You don't just want to start emailing directly from your download. So here's what you need to do next. You're going to need to clean your lists, and we use Million Verifier to clean our lists, and here's a couple of our recent records that we've cleaned. And as you can see here, you've got good, you've got risky, and you've got bad. This is a brief overview of what these mean. So good emails are valid existing emails. It's safe to send to them. We only send to good. However, you might want to consider also sending to risky. Risky emails couldn't be validated. They may exist or they might not. Uh, a lot of risky emails are catch-all emails, which means the email server is set to accept all mail, and sometimes it does bounce back. A little golden nugget from my experience, if you're targeting startups, companies one through 10, I would hit risky just because it's usually like the hello at 
And if they're younger companies, smaller companies, typically the founder does get those. So it can be worth hitting those. Bads, never, never send to bads. So if you're gonna download a report after this, it should be good emails only, or you can do a custom report with good and risky. We only send to good, which makes it a lot harder for us to pull data because we have to pull a lot more of it. Typically we get 50 to 60% good emails. So if I'm exporting 20,000, I'm really usually only getting around 10,000 good emails that I can send to. All right, one thing that I need to mention regarding this setup, using Instantly, which is gonna be the most cost-effective and effective strategy. I only have 125,000 total contacts that I can have included at all times. If I'm contacting 50,000 new contacts every single month, in three months, I'm gonna run over that limit. I'm gonna have to increase every single month. So with Instantly, you do have to periodically clear out contacts that you've already emailed. And they make that very easy to do. All you have to do is go into your campaigns, figure out a campaign that you need to replenish. You'll come into leads. You can filter by if they've been contacted or not, select and delete them. All right, now let's talk about some numbers. What do you actually need to do to scale up to 75,000 emails per month? Now divided by 25 active sending days per month because you don't wanna send every single day of the month. I usually take Sundays off. I divided this by 25 to get about 3,000 emails per day that's sent. Now with that, I send 50 emails per day per sender. So each sender should send no more than 50 emails per day to stay under the radar. I've seen people go up to 60. I've seen people go up to 100. They can burn out. So I recommend staying around that 50 emails per sender limit. Now with that, you'll need about 60 senders in order to reach these numbers, assuming that everything is active and running. I also recommend never doing more than two senders per domain. Sometimes I do three and break that rule, but never more than three. Two senders per domain puts us at around 30 domains. Now the fastest and easiest way to scale your set senders and scale your domains and do this affordably, in my opinion, is using Office 365 and GoDaddy. Now with GoDaddy, you can purchase the domain and set up an Office 365 subscription for your sender accounts for only $2 per month because they have an exclusive partnership with GoDaddy. And if you wanna learn how I set it up using GoDaddy and Office 365, the video will be linked in the description so you can click and go to that video and learn that setup. It's the fastest and cheapest way to scale your cold email senders so you can reach that 60 senders very quickly. Now you will need to warm these senders for at least two weeks before you start using them. I recommend four weeks if you can wait, but two weeks will work just fine. And then leave that warming on as they're sending. So you'll be sending about 100 emails per day per sender. 50 will be warming, 50 will be active. This is my recommendation. Uh, other people have other recommendations, but usually they're around these lines. Now here's what kind of numbers you can expect once you reach that 75,000 emails per day range. Now in general, these are the metrics that I would consider a successful campaign. Obviously I've run campaigns that do a lot better than this. I've also seen a lot of campaigns do a lot worse than this. I would keep working on your campaign until you have at least these metrics, at least an open rate of 60%. And if it's not, you need to change your subject lines, you need to change your opener, and you might even need to change your targeting, target somebody different. Those are the factors that affect your open rate. This is what I would aim for. If you're not getting at least 3% replies, it means you're sending emails to people that don't want what you have to offer. So either change your offer or change your target. Targeting. You need to get at least 3% replies in order for a cold email to be effective. Now, out of that 3%, 1% are going to be real opportunities. These are going to be meetings booked, conversations that you're having, talking about your product or service. And here's how that translates once you're sending 3,000 emails per day, 75,000 emails per month. You should be getting about 90 replies per day. Not all of those are going to be good. Not all of those are going to be qualified. Out of those, you should be getting about 30 opportunities per day. Most of those should translate into sales calls and hopefully deals for your business. Now, that's not a ton. Once you're scaling, and once you're a big agency. So that's why you need to reach these big numbers, like 75,000 emails per month. And obviously, there's a lot of things that you can do to manipulate this. A lot of our reply rates are around 10%. A lot of our opportunities are around three or 4%. And our open rates can be as high as 90% in some cases. So here's some quick tips on how to increase the effectiveness of your campaigns. So the first thing you need to know is always be testing. This top campaign here is testing a specific offer that's PR related. Basically, do you wanna be in USA Today? We found that it's more effective to give somebody a specific offer that they actually want. So rather than saying, hey, I'm a digital marketer. Do you wanna hire me for your company? I'd love to help. That's not gonna get a lot of opens. That's not gonna get a lot of replies. Instead say, I will build your website for free in 30 days 
or I'll give you a free report of this, or I noticed that you're not using this technology. Would you like to work with me? Have a specific offer, a specific lead magnet, something that they actually want instead of saying, here's who I am, here's what I do. Then you need to experiment with different industries. It's very likely that the banking industry doesn't need what you have to offer, but the health and fitness industry might. So split test different offers, figure out what your audience actually wants, and then give it to them. The other reason this strategy is really effective is because by split testing different offers in different industries, you're actually able to contact the same people more than once because you're offering something that's adjacent and not the same. For example, if you are targeting people in the health and fitness space and you're offering them help with their website and they don't respond or they say not interested at this time, that doesn't mean that they're not interested in reputation management or SEO on their website. It's a different but adjacent offer. So you can contact those same people more than once. Now, a very easy way to do this within Instantly is their split testing function here on the left. So all you have to do is add variant to try something different, to try a new approach, to try a different offer and see what people are actually replying to. So say this whole campaign is going to IT companies, which it is. I can set up five or six different variations in this step one, all with different offers. And it could even be variations of the same offer to see what these people are actually interested in replying to, see what they really want. And then you can reframe all of your other campaigns, all of your other messages to get the maximum number of replies and the maximum number of opportunities. Here's what your biggest challenge is actually going to be as you try and scale to 75,000 emails per month. And that's finding a data provider that's affordable enough to scale with you. Apollo.io, we get about 2 million credits per month, as you saw. If you try and go to them today and say, I want 2 million exports per month and I want to export unlimited data points at one time, they're going to laugh in your face or they're going to charge you thousands of dollars per month to do that. So one thing that you can do is add me on Instagram, send me a DM, ask how much our enterprise plan costs, and then go and talk to them with that data point. That might help you a lot. Now, the second problem that I'm probably not going to be able to solve for you in this video is the workflow to get all that data segmented, exported, cleaned, and into the campaigns every single week, because you're going to have to monitor these to see which campaigns are running low. Once you hit those limits, you're going to have to have a process for removing those leads from the campaigns, adding them to a block list, or segmenting them into Apollo so that you don't hit them again. We use a VA to do this. We've trained her over the course of several weeks using processes that we developed for us. And I'm not going to be able to give you the exact process because it's going to vary a lot based on who you want to target, how you want to segment your data. All of those things are unique to you. Now, the next step for you is to learn more about Instantly and Apollo, our two core tools. And you can do that right here by watching these videos on the channel. They're somewhere on the screen. And I hope you enjoyed this. I'll see you in the next one.